Hey guys, Bodhi the Movie Maker here. How to animate a character in Unreal Engine made easy and simple. First off, real quick, I am using animation in my short film that I'm making in Unreal Engine for anything that moves in my short film, but animation is also used in games, of course. Um, from the most complex animations to the simplest ones you could imagine. For example, when your character is just standing in place and you're not touching the controller, you're not moving them around at all, there is an animation playing on repeat. It's called the idle animation. It shows them breathing, just standing, maybe looking around, maybe checking their watch every once in a while. That is a repeating animation. And I'm gonna show you how to make that animation today. This is a video about making simple how to start animating in Unreal Engine. So, the absolute simplest way, if you're using an Unreal Engine mannequin, the default character within Unreal Engine, it makes it easier because it comes with a pre-built control rig. A control rig basically allows you to control each part of the mannequin's posable body. It turns the mannequin into an action figure that you can maneuver and pose. Control rig is basically just a series of controls throughout your mannequin's body that you can click on and manipulate. But what if you want to use other characters other than the default Unreal Engine mannequins, such as this hazmat suit guy I bought on Unreal Engine Marketplace, or this zombie monster? Well, you will have to make your own control rig. Before we continue, please do me a favor, drop a like, drop a comment, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when my next video comes out. So let's show you how to animate using the Unreal Engine mannequin. So you bring your Unreal Engine mannequin into your level. Your level is your map. It's the editable area you are in by default, or in this case, the custom level you created. If you wanna see how I created this spooky forest, watch this video, link in the description, or click right here. So then open a new level sequence, add level sequence, name the sequence and put it wherever you want to. I have a folder called sequences. That opens up a new level sequence. A sequence is like a timeline. You'll be familiar with this if you're a video editor. It's a lot like video editing. It's a linear timeline from left to right. Now, click track, actor to sequence, and find the mannequin character. If it was selected, it'll be right at the top here, skm underscore manny. So once you click that, it brings it into your sequencer. And by default, it opens up the animation mode, and boom, now we see the Unreal Engine default mannequin. And you can see the different controls, and when you click them, it brings up the um, control functions, and we change it to rotate, and we've rotated his head. Now let's rotate his shoulder. So now you can see it turns him into an action figure that we can pose. All right, but again, now we want to do that with the hazmat character, or possibly our monster. Before we bring our hazmat character into the sequencer, let's show you how to make a control rig so that we can control him. First, you right click on the hazmat character's skeletal mesh. Under create, go down to the bottom, control rig. Boom, creates a new control rig. Let's open that up. Now over on the left side of this window, you can see rig hierarchy, open that up. And it shows you a list of the bones in their hierarchical order. Um, certain bones are parented to other bones. So now we are going to select just the bones that I want right now. We're gonna leave out some bones because we're gonna keep this as simple as possible. Pelvis, spine one, spine two, spine three, clavicle left, upper arm left, lower arm left, hand left. We're skipping all the left hand fingers. Then we're going down and selecting clavicle right, upper arm right, lower arm right, right hand. Then we're skipping all the fingers on the right hand and we're going to neck and head. Then we are going to select thigh left, calf left, skipping calf twist. We're gonna select fo left foot and left ball. 
Get your mind out of the gutter. The ball of his foot. Come on. And we're skipping thigh twist, and we're going right to right thigh, right calf, right foot, right ball. Come on. And we're going, and that's all of the bones we're selecting. Right click on all the bones you selected and go to new, add controls for selected. This will automatically generate a series of controls which are uh, properly nested under the right. So the bones will be in the same hierarchical order. Meaning the bones that were parented to certain bones now the controls that match those bones will be parented to the same. Does that, just look at it. I don't know how to explain it. Just look at it, okay? God damn it. I'm expanding all of these bones so you can see the hierarchy is the same. Now we're gonna select all of these controls, drag it over to the blueprint, create from array. That's gonna create an item array. Let's go back and reselect all of the bones we selected. Now, click and drag all of the bones and create from item array. Drop them into the blueprint and now you review the two of them and make sure they both have the same amount of items and that they're in the same exact order. They need to match up. So go from the top to the bottom, checking that they all match up. If they don't match up, delete the node and reselect all of the bones or all of the controls and bring them back over. So now we're pulling out from the bone array and we're going to get four each. Type in four each. Now from the control array, drag that out and type at. Then from four each, pull out from the element and type in set transform. Now from element, the at element, drag out and do get transform. We're going to connect the index from for each to at. We're going to connect the transform from get transform to the value spot on set transform. Drag out from execute on forward solve to execute on for each. Now click compile and you'll see we have controls. We can control our hazmat guy, but our controls look funky. They're not very easy to click. We will fix that later. Now let's get a backward solve onto our blueprint. Now let's copy all of these nodes here, everything except for forward solve, copy and paste. Now this is going to the, the backward solve is going to be the exact same as the forward solve with one key difference. Let's disconnect the connections between the bone array and the control array and let's switch them. Now the bone array is going to be connected to the at and the control array is going to be connected to the for each. And then from backward solve drag out execute to for each execute and compile. Okay, now it's time to adjust our controls. So one by one you can click the controls and choose the shape you want the control to be. Again, the control is just the thing you click to be able to adjust that joint. You can adjust the size, the color, the placement. You can play around with this, but basically you just want it to be big enough that your mouse can click it. You know, some people make the, all of the controls on the left side of the mesh's body one color and the right a different color so they're easy to distinguish. Some people use different shapes for different parts of the body. That's up to you to decide what works best for you. But I pretty much went through every single shape one by one and uh, adjusted them manually and it takes a few minutes. Now that we've got our control rig set up, Let's bring our hazmat skeletal mesh into the level. Let's add a new level sequencer, starting from fresh. Name it whatever you want. Save it wherever you want. Again, I keep it in a folder called sequences. Let's open up the sequencer. Let's click on our skeletal mesh to make the next part easier. Let's click track, add to sequence, and by default, it already knows I've selected the hazmat, so that's the first option up at the top. 
choose actor, add SK hazmat to. So now you can see we've added the hazmat skeletal mesh to the sequencer. There are three tracks that automatically pop up. The one on the top is the skeletal mesh. Underneath that, there's an animation track. Underneath that, there's a transform track. On the top track, click the track button. Then under control rig, go down to asset based control rig and let's select the one we just made. I've made multiple as you can see, but you'll have just made your first one. So the one that I just made is SK Hazmat Control Rig 2. So select the one you just created. Boom. Now it automatically changes you into animation mode and that's why you can see the control rig. And now these different shapes that we've made, you simply go click on the lines of the shape that you that are correspond to the joint that you want to manipulate first. So the first thing we're going to do is make an idle animation. So I've got to take him out of his sort of T pose and put him into a more regular human just standing there pose with his arms down by his sides. So that's why I'm clicking the wrists, the elbows, the clavicles, the shoulders. I'm dropping his arms to his sides one joint at a time. So now that I've got him properly positioned, I'm going to bring my mouse back down to the sequencer and you can see all of these different tracks under the control rig. Those, so there's a track for every single controllable bone in this control rig. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna keyframe this position I just created. He's, I've dropped his arms to his side and now I wanna save that on this timeline. So the scrubber is already placed on frame 0000. So at the beginning of the sequence, the scrubber is the tool that allows you to move through the timeline and select a specific frame, just like in video editing or when you're watching a YouTube video. It's the linear tool that allows you to move forward on the timeline. Whatever frame that scrubber is on is the frame you are looking at. Right now we're looking at the first frame of this sequence. Keyframing is how you save these changes that we just made. We're going to by keyframing it on frame zero, we're telling the sequence that we want our hazmat guy to look exactly like this on frame zero. Just click this keyframe button here next to his control rig and it will make a keyframe for every single one of his joints. So add keyframe. So now we've added a keyframe to the first frame of this sequence. Now let's scrub forward to frame 30. And let's now adjust his arms. We're making him breathe out. His chest is going to puff out. So his arms are going out to his sides. I'm actually going to have his wrists come in, even though his upper arms are going to go out. His head is going to come down a little bit, his neck too, and his chest is going to puff out by going up vertically. Now we're going to keyframe every joint in his body. It's simpler than keyframing just the ones that I adjusted. And we did that at frame 30. So now let's press play. And we can see it goes from the first keyframe to the second. Now we're going to copy the first keyframes that I did. And we're going to scrub over to frame 60 and paste. So now we have three sets of keyframes. And when we press play, his chest puffs out and then goes back in. I forgot to record this part. This red line here is the end of the sequence. You can move that to adjust where you want your sequence to end, how long you want it to be. And the green line over here is where your sequence starts. You can also adjust that. So we're gonna bring this red line, the end of the sequence over to frame 60 so that it ends with the last set of keyframes. His arms rise and then go back to a lowered position. That is the basis of the breathing animation. That's a two second animation. Now let's export this animation. Hover the mouse over your skeletal mesh track on the sequencer, right click and select bake animation sequence. Choose a folder. I have a folder called animations and name your animation. Hazmat idle test. B for Bodhi the Movie Maker. Okay, export animation. 
Boom, now that animation is saved in your animation folder. Now let's use it. Let's close the sequencer. Let's go back to selection mode. And with my skeletal mesh selected, let's go into the details panel and under animation, animation change the animation mode to use animation asset. You'll see anim to play none. That's because no animation has yet been selected. So we're gonna go to our content drawer. We're gonna navigate to the animation folder. We're going to find the animation that I just created. There it is, and we're gonna drag it into that spot. Boom, now let's press play. So we, he's breathing. And it's, it's subtle, but he's breathing. <laughs> now keep in mind, it's pretty dark on my level because it's a short horror film. So he's illuminated by a flashlight. And you can see I applied the same process to this uh, zombie monster. I made the rig and I made him a simple breathing animation, very subtle, and here it is in action. So that's that. Showed you how to make a idle animation. You can easily use these same steps now that you have a control rig to make whatever animation you want. <laughs> hey, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. It really helps. And also, we are, we got merch. This is some of the handmade limited edition merch that's gonna be coming to the store. Links in the description to check it out. Bye. Thank you for watching.